Hello guys, it's Matt and welcome to another optimization video. This time it is for Dying Light 2 and this is a very enjoyable game to test through. The objective of this guide is to target comparable or better image quality than the next gen consoles while also maintaining frame rates above 70 for fluidity. And it's because I'm using a G-Sync monitor. Here are my specs to serve as your guide in adjusting your own settings. And with that out of the way, let's go. The first thing we need to know is which of the non-RTX settings we can leave on high without worrying about performance. In this case, I have identified six options in the advanced video settings that have a very negligible performance benefit. These are AA quality, motion blur quality, particles quality, contact shadows quality, ambient occlusion quality, and global illumination quality. These six options I really recommend to leave at high because not only is the performance gain non-existent, the visual quality you lose is much much greater when you turn them down. Take a look at this outdoor scene for example. Even if you turn down to low all those six settings, what we get is just a measly 3 FPS gain. But what we lost are the contact shadows which add depth to the foliage and the environmental objects. Not a worth sacrifice to me, especially when you move indoors. In here, what we're seeing is just a 4 FPS gain when turning down those settings and if you can notice, this mainly comes from the ambient occlusion which heavily dictates the depth of a scene. Especially the shadowing of the furniture you can see here. Moving down to low removes occlusion shadows around the arms of the chairs and the top layer of the center table. While moving down even further, just disables AO completely which is just plain yucky. So I really recommend high for all those six settings, especially ambient occlusion. But if you're really hard pressed for some additional frame rate, you can compromise by settling with low AO, but the rest of those 5 settings just leave at high. Next we will focus on the non-RTX settings that do matter in performance. And these are just two, fog and reflection. For me personally, I use high fog quality, but there is a significant performance increase when going down to lower settings. And this is where things get a little bit weird because while medium does have reduced strobing artifact movements compared to low, medium has this weird graded volumetric pattern that's not present in low. Same thing can be seen in this example. My recommendation for fog is since you're moving down to high for performance anyways, I'd rather go with low since you're sacrificing fog quality either way with medium but on low, you're getting 10 or more FPS compared to medium. Next we have reflections. Now, water looks bad in this game, so turning down reflections doesn't make much of a visual difference. Sure, the resolution of reflected images is reduced as you move down to low, but without side-by-side -side comparisons such as this, you won't notice a difference. However, it does give a substantial performance boost and you're not seeing water for most of the game either way so for this one I can recommend medium and even low. So those are the non-RTX optimized settings. If you're not interested in RTX and want to keep things simple then you're done. Once again from high preset simply set reflections and fog to low. I generally recommend DX12 over DX11 for modern GPUs. This is because DX12 prevents CPU bottlenecks and allows your GPU to be fully utilized as evidenced by the 99% GPU usage. More importantly, if you're using DX12, be sure to enable asynchronous compute as this is basically a free FPS boost. So. Here's the comparison between high presets and our non-RTX optimized settings. Can you notice any visual difference? Now, with low settings out of the way, let's get to the real settings which will obliterate your GPU. 
ray tracing effects. This is ray traced ambient occlusion. In here, we see a huge increase in the accuracy of the occluded shadows around objects, props, and even foliage. You may also have noticed that from 7 to 1 FPS, we have now dropped down to 47, and that's a lot of FPS to be lost. But let's turn off ray traced AO and instead use ray traced global illumination. For me, this is the biggest visual changer out of all these settings. But this is more expensive than Ray Trace AO because this brought down our FPS to 43 when RTX AO was much better at 47. But what would happen if we combine the two? Will our performance be then 47 FPS minus 24? Let's find out. Surprisingly, our performance instead got better by 2 FPS so you absolutely have no reason to only use other one of them. Next, we have RTX Shadows. This produces the most accurate cascading shadows that resolves shadow shapes better than PCF and increases shadow dispersion as it projects further away from its source. RTX Shadows does take a hit when added to the previous ones, albeit on a much lesser extent. On its own, however, it takes about 10 FPS, but when coupled with the others, performance will surely decrease, but its impact is much, much lesser. Lastly, we have RTX Reflections, and this is the most disappointing RTX setting in this game. You might notice that the light projected in the real space is also projected in the reflections, but generally, Overall quality still looks bad and similar to even the low reflection setting, such as this one. So this is a no-brainer. I really don't recommend using RTX reflections for now. Now, it's obvious that hitting 70 FPS, let alone 60 FPS, with RTX settings is just impossible. This means we need to make use of DLSS. And I'm happy to report that DLSS is so effective in this game that it looks even better than native 1440p. Here, for example, we have the high quality RTX preset at native 1440p, compared to our RTX optimized settings, which has RTX shadows and reflections disabled while using DLSS quality. This is the best combination you can get to push beyond 60 FPS in this game. In contrast, FSR quality looks very bad in this game. Take a look at this example. The picture just becomes a huge blur and it looks unresolved and murky. Yes, you might notice the superior performance compared to DLSS quality, but simply using DLSS balance is a much better choice. Not only does DLSS balanced look much better than FSR quality, but the performance gain is now greater compared to FSR. Whew, that's a lot of settings guys. To recap, here are the optimized RDX settings we used to hit my target objective of 70 plus FPS. What we did was, from high quality RTX preset, we used PCF shadows, high reflections, and set DLSS to balance, and that's it. But if you want even more FPS, here are other combinations. You can turn down reflections and fog to low and use DLSS performance. You can settle with this one since you're already getting much higher frame rates than before, or you can utilize ray traced shadows instead. It all depends on your choice. So that's it guys, I hope I didn't overwhelm you with a lot of settings to consider. It's just min-maxing the RTX settings is very tricky to pin down. Please tell me your personal settings on your own setup. If you've got any questions, just comment down below. Thank you very much guys, stay safe, and bye-bye.